So what is the difference between a motif and a melody? Well, I just spent three days synchronizing a real recording of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony to sheet music, and I did this with extreme precision in order to help answer this question. But why did I spend time synchronizing a real orchestra to sheet music? I could have just used a MIDI file to show you. Well, the reason is because seeing how playback works on a real symphony, and a symphony that's familiar to all of us, is a very effective teaching aid. So in order to explain the differences, we first need a grasp of what a motif is. But before I do that, if you would like to see the full seven minutes of Beethoven's first movement of his fifth symphony scrolling to the actual sheet music like this, then let me know by liking this video and by subscribing. So if these numbers are high, I'll make this my next video. Okay, so let's begin our analysis and take a look at the intro. What do we see? We are introduced to two phrases of four notes each. Before this symphony existed, these four notes really wouldn't have much of a meaning. The first two measures here simply play two pitches, which are part of the C minor chord, and the next two measures do exactly the same thing, but in D minor. So at this point, without any further context, all we get is an inferred C minor chord followed by an inferred D minor chord. All right, so what's going on here? We don't have anything meaningful yet. With the data that we have at this point, this is not even a composition, but maybe a chord study. So let's continue because after all, music is not just about an individual note or melody, but it's about the overall story. So let's play a little more of this symphony now. As we move deeper into the symphony, we really have more of the same. We have four notes that play in C minor and another four notes that now shift to the key and four notes that hit F minor. Four notes that hit G. Four notes that hit F. Four notes that hit C. 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 If we just look at what Beethoven did here at face value, we have very basic chord changing or melodic intervals. A melodic interval is where notes of a chord are played one after another. And this pattern continues until we hit the melody portion of the symphony. So is Beethoven just a bad composer? Well, let's look beyond the individual notes. Maybe we'll find something. I'm going to focus on all the groups of four notes that we've discovered. In fact, I'm now starting to see why the 2-4 time signature was so important for this movement. Beethoven was able to emphasize these groups of fours in a much more organized fashion for the performers. In fact, as I dig deeper into this music notation, you can really start to see the simplicity of this composition. We have basic key changing, extreme repetition, and an easy to read time, and an easy to read time signature of 2-4, which gives us a very well organized symphony. The fact that Beethoven stretched these four notes so much now gives this composition some meaning. Let's listen to this part more closely. You can hear and see another series of four notes play in the double bass and cello, but instead of two pitches, we now have only one pitch, which is in the key of C minor. So it should be clear by now that Beethoven isn't as focused on melody in this movement of his symphony.
but he is in fact focused on three eighth notes followed by another eighth note quarter note or half note and throughout this entire movement of this symphony we're gonna hear these four notes and different variations of these notes everywhere including in the melody portion of this symphony which i'm going to demonstrate next The melody part of this symphony is indicated in purple. But what makes this part a melody? Well, certainly not any rhythmic variation. Beethoven is generally a rhythmic master. However, he didn't use any rhythmic variation in this melody because it's driven just by quarter notes. But what we do have is several different pitches organized into groups of clusters, again, which I point out in these purple boxes here. Also, the melody is very catchy and has some sort of pattern. It also blends in very well with the chosen harmonies. But if you listen more closely, you're going to start to notice something interesting here. Do you hear it? Let me play this again. See if you can hear something familiar. Now if you look closely, I'm pointing out something very familiar with yellow highlights in the cello and double bass. We are in fact hearing the same four notes that we heard in the intro of the symphony, but it's used in a completely different context. How cool is that? These four notes are in fact the motif of the symphony, and they're being used to complement the melody portion of the symphony. So let me now explain the difference between a motif and a melody. As I was able to demonstrate to you, a motif is a short collection of notes that are often repeated throughout a composition in order to trigger a specific mood. The note pitches must be similar in rhythms, and as you can see with Beethoven's motif throughout the symphony, the motif is always three eighth notes followed by another note of equal or longer duration. And that final note could be a few pitches higher or a few pitches lower or even exactly the same pitch. As long as the general phrase of notes remains the same and it's short and presented throughout the composition, it will qualify as a motif. And as Beethoven cleverly demonstrated, you can even use a motif in conjunction with a melody. So now what's a melody? Well, I believe that a melody is actually not that easy to define, but if I had to define it, it's a voice in composition that should consist of more than a few notes so that it has a solid identity. And generally, this identity will have a pattern. So it's not quite the same as a motif where a motif without any context really won't sound like anything. For instance, the opening of this symphony consists of just two pitches and four notes in the key of C minor, then it's followed by another four notes of two pitches in D minor. So if we stop here, there's no identity yet without any further context. So the identity of these notes will become a parent after we listen to the symphony. So even though this composition is quite simple in both harmony and melody, the beauty of this work is in fact in its simplicity and its technique. The structure of this composition is also well organized and the moods that Beethoven creates are very laser focused. He switches between two main moods, the motif driven portions of the symphony and the melodic portions of this symphony, and you don't get anything else. So what happens when we have a well organized composition with simple harmony, a short motif that repeats throughout a seven minute symphony, and a simple melody that's heard at least three times? Well, we get one of the most recognizable symphonies in the world, driven by just four four notes and two pitches. So if there's anything that we can learn from Beethoven, it's this. Music is not about a single note, harmony, or melody, but it's about technique and the overall story.